for Blog TV viewers, anybody that's missed it. Okay, friends, the 26th of June, 2011. And the time is 18.42. Uh, PC Caremont speaking. I'm also on Twitter as PC Caremont and www.pccaremont.com. Okay. If you're into computer jingles, if you can make me a jingle for the show, which is a computer jingle, or if you're into web design and you want to help me improve my website, uh, of course it has to be free to support the room, okay? Please let me know as I would like that to be done or someone can do it. Okay, so as I say, we're talking about the iPod 2. Now, this here at the bottom is what they call a darkened station, okay? When I ordered it, it looked bigger than what it was. The Comfort Model website. Your, iMac, or sorry, your iPod sits on the top of that. And on the back, your power lead goes in. And you can put a set of speakers in or a headset. That there was about $22 or $23. Okay. Take the iPod sits on the dock here, the bottom. They are expensive because they're built by Apple. But I believe that Apple has the right materials and it's, the hardware's good and etc. Okay. Post on money, whether that's good or not. Uh, so that's the iPod 2. Okay. That's a 32 gigabyte one. There is another one, a 64 gigabyte. And uh, I think the first one is 16. So that's that's a 32. We've got expensive. Okay. But as I say, it's very thin. It is a computer. Okay. That's very good. Okay. So that's the iPod 2. Let's go to the desktop and talk about. Uh, What do you call it? Uh, last pass. Okay, last pass. Now, personally speaking, friends, I don't see a password on my computer. No matter how good I am, I don't see a password on my computer. Because there's always somebody that we but smarter. And if he gets access to my system, obviously he's, he's going to be better than me. Well, then he's going to get my passwords. I have a different password for every account. How do I remember it? Well, it's, it's buried in the back of my head, okay? But it doesn't always work. I could go to a Facebook account tonight and I know my password just comes straight out like that in the head. I can go to blog accounts a different password again. My Twitter account's different again. And etc. I don't use the same password, okay. And I don't use this program, but it is available for those that want to use it. There's quite a number now. I believe LastPass is an add-on application for Firefox. Or if you could check it out for me, uh, go to your Firefox add-ons, please, and see if there's a an add-on called uh, Last L A S T. Sorry, L A S T P R S S. Okay. Because I don't want to go into Firefox and using it at the moment. But I will show you this uh, small video here. Now, this is the website for it. And this is what they say. Basically, you would use this program if you wish. Okay, no. You can use this program if you wish, friends. I don't use it, but it is available. A lot of guys do use it. I would use a flash drive to save my passwords. Where you plug in USB 2 and take it out. It's not in the computer, but it's there if I can't remember a particular password. And according to the feedback and the podcast shows, this is recommended. Okay. So apparently this is what they call the master for securing your passwords. Okay, it's called last pass.
And there's a video here, but I'm um, just hoping you can see it. If not, I can go back to or see if I can do it this way. Customize. Hold on, friends. Wait a second, just a wee bit of fan of ice here. I want to make sure you see. Oh, oh well, there's one there. So. The basic instructions for using the LastPass password manager. After installation, the LastPass icon will. Hold on, friends. This box isn't generally supposed to be. Let's close this box. Let's go back to this one. And let's pull this back. This is LastPass. Okay. LastPass is basically uh, LastPass instructions. Okay. It's a video that's on YouTube. Okay. So hopefully you can see this and hear it. Are the basic instructions for using the LastPass password manager. After installation, the LastPass icon will appear in the upper right corner of your browser. A gray icon means you're not logged on. A red icon means you are logged on. Let's log into LastPass now. After logging into LastPass, you do not have to do anything differently. LastPass will save passwords as you enter them. For example, to add your email account, go to the site and log in as usual. When LastPass detects a new Sorry, friends, hold on. Bear with me a second. Shouldn't be buffering because uh, I have a fiber object connection. Hello, this is Arlene again. I want to show you one of my favorite utilities and websites. This is a program slash website called LastPass. And LastPass is a password manager and form filler. Okay? You can let your web browser manage your forms and passwords, but it's not secure. If anyone were to get a hold of your computer, uh, they could easily get all of your passwords. Okay, so what LastPass does is it encrypts it, it makes it safe. It also makes it really easy for you to generate a, a secure password, a different password for every website that you visit. Okay, and it makes web browsing a little bit a little bit more fun, a little bit simpler, because you don't have to remember all of these passwords. Just remember one password and let the program remember everything else for you. Okay, and this is one of uh, my favorite things. Let me show you something here. Um, you can see this is for Windows, Mac, Linux, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Safari, Chrome, uh, any of these mobile operating systems here. And it's really neat because it, it syncs your passwords across Browsers across computers, mobile devices. Uh, it's it's a really great product. I'll tell you, I used to use uh, programs. I used to buy programs that would do this, and LastPass will do this for free. Okay, it's a free download, or you can get the premium version, which adds some extra features. And I won't go into that today. You can check this out for yourself. Okay. Well, I'm using, uh, I'm using Firefox, which is my preferred browser. And instead of downloading and going through all of this stuff, I'm going to install it this way. I'm going to go to Tools, Add-ons, uh, Get Add-ons, and I'm going to right here type Last Pass. Hit Enter. Okay, then Last Pass comes up. And we'll just add that to Firefox. Connect. Do you trust this thing? Yes, I do. Okay, restart Firefox. Okay, I'm out. Restart.
And when Firefox starts up, LastPass will be installed. Okay. Yeah, much? Yeah, I can't watch. It is the first time you're installing LastPass on your computer. A box will pop up here and guide you through setting up the service. Um, putting your email and the one password that you're going to remember. Okay. The other thing LastPass does is it puts a little box up here. This is how you're going to work with LastPass from here on out. All right. So for now, whenever I go to a website and I input my username and my password, LastPass will ask me if I want to save that information. Pretty cool. And if I uh, enter in form data, it'll ask me if I want to save that too. So let me show you how that works. Uh, I'm here at one of my favorite sites, Apple Insider. And I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm in the forums, I'm gonna register to be a part of this website. So put in my month, day, year of my birth date and proceed. Okay, I'm, I'll agree to this form rules. Okay, now I have to select the username. This is how you pull it in. So Put your username in. My username is good. Uh, your password. A password. Let me log in to LastPass. So I can start using the service then. And uh, then it'll save all this information for me. So I'll type in my email. Turn off the keystroke so you can't see my password. Okay, that's good. Turn off the keystroke so you can see what I'm doing. <coughs> okay, and okay, friends. So, not the boyish with the details. Okay, basically, it's a password monitor. Okay, now it's very important. You make your master password something like this. Let me type it into the chat room. Now, don't use this here as your password, but to give you an idea the way to do a password, this is the way I would do it. Okay, if you design a password like this, it will take months and years and years for someone to crack that password by using a password cracker or using what they call a brute force attack, which is basically a brute force attack on your password to try and find out if your password sits in the hacker's dictionary. Okay, you're probably saying that that password would be hard to remember. So what I suggest you could do, you could buy yourself a small uh, USB stick. And you can save all your passwords on your USB stick. Put it into your computer when you need it and take it out when you're finished. That way it's not saved on your computer. Passwords are basically another way to try and stop the bad guys from gaining access to your computer. If you have a password with the name uh, George23, that password, sorry, if you have that name, that password, that password can be cracked in the matter of seconds, okay? Even if you change it around slightly or put your kid's date of birth, it's no good, okay? This is by experience, friends. Uh, there is a website there, I'm sure where I put the link in for us. It's TRC website, uh, perfect passwords. And TRC is basically a guy called Steve Gibson, and he does security now. That's what he does. He's the very first guy that designed the very first piece of anti-spyware software in the world. And I've been following Steve from day one, from my first started 
computers. And I listen to every one of his podcasts, and I also make sure that I have a notebook and pencil, because you will find quite a lot of information. Okay, so this is or stay for what he has done for me. And this is the reason I'm talking about him. Uh, TRC. The home, or sorry, the home of research operation. Okay. That guy is, in my books, the best security analyst in the world. Now, you will see a program called Spinrate, okay, which Steve sells. It pays for his staff and it keeps his web server going. Thanks for it. Okay, so that's the link there. It's very secure. I'll talk about Spinrate. I have bought it. I'll talk about it in one of the other uh Podcasts as we do. Also, you have Shields Up, okay, which is basically a way of checking your service ports on your computer if they're open. I just to explain roughly what ports are, okay. There's over 65,000 ports on every computer. Every one of them ports is a doorway to access to the world from your computer back and forwards. 65,000 over. I believe there's over 65,650 ports in a computer. If I'm wrong, somebody can crack me in that. And every port is a door, like a door to your house. You wouldn't leave your door of your house open. Night is. So you don't want to leave your ports open. Okay. Your browser uses ports 1080 and 48. Your email uses another port. Your internet service provider will secure so many ports on your computer, but the rest is up to you. So if you want to find out if there's any open ports on your computer, you can go to Shields Up. How you close a port is quite simple. First of all, you've got to find out what port is open on your computer. You've got to find out what actually the port is what service is using that particular port and we will talk about later on in the podcast is of how to close certain services on your computer so if you keep with us in the next six months the next year you will learn this okay this is stuff that i have learned and i'm willing to pass it on to my friends or anybody that wants to listen for it if you go to the top here better say home Spin right on services. If you go to uh, the link of where it's put in, passwords, you can use that and you can copy the password and put it on the notepad and use it for your wireless connection, your router uh, administration password. Okay, that's another subject we'll talk about on another day how to secure your actual router. A router is basically a way of connecting your Ethernet connection or your wireless connection that's supplied to you by your internet service provider or one you bought yourself. And they all come by default settings. Okay. Which means if I'm sitting outside your house with a laptop, I pick up your wireless signal. If you're using the default settings, I can piggyback and get a free connection on your expense. Okay. Close your internet down and I can basically see your desktop or see anything that's on your computer. Okay, that's very simple to do. So you must protect your computer by putting in passwords. Okay. And uh, this one here, perfect passwords, is the one that we're talking about. And it's called Perfect Passwords, and it is TRC's Ultra High Security Password Generator. There is a number of password generators on the internet today that's available, but this one beats them all, okay? You will see here that he's offered me 64-bit random passwords, a 63-bit random. This is the one that I would go for, and this is what I would do. I would Start here, I would highlight it, 
I would copy, I would open Notepad up and I would paste it in. Then I would transfer it to my USB drive or an external hard drive where nobody is going to get access to it. Okay. When you refresh a page, you'll be given different passwords. If you want to test this password for security, I have done a video on this. It is on Blog TV and it's also on YouTube. You would go to password haystacks, okay, this is called, this is a new thing he's put up, okay. And this basically will tell me how long it takes to crack this password. If I paste it in and hit enter, you will see an offline fast attack scenario. A hundred trillion 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 centuries to crack. That's the password you want, friends. And you don't want to be giving it out to anybody, no matter way you think they are a friend or not. Okay. Because unfortunately we can fall out sometimes or accept it, whatever. Okay. An online tax scenario fifty point seventy billion trillion centuries to crack. To give you an idea. Okay, the stronger your password is, the better. So use the upper spaces or lower space keys on your keyboard. Okay, so enough for you with that. I hope that I sort of give you an idea how to protect your system. That's why I believe a lot of Facebook accounts are hacked because people click on the wrong links. Okay, I mate, no problem. This is what we do, uh, let's say, this is what we do. War me has been doing this for years. Uh, it's hard sometimes to take it all in, but I try to take my time so people can understand it, rather than just blubber on about it, you know. I actually take my time. That's the advantage that people have here. Uh, let's go to Google. And I'm looking for a program. I come across this program. Uh, a couple of days ago by accident. We've all heard of mini tube, okay, where you can use it for YouTube. But this week program's called Tubu. I think it is let me see if I can spell this right. T O O P L E. Okay, Tubo. Now this is the download link. Now you don't have to use this program, it's just Another one of these programs on the internet that's quite handy, okay? And it's called Tubo, T O O B L E. If you're broadcasting on Justin TV, this is handy rather than having to go to YouTube itself, okay? And you can download it here, it is free for Windows and uh, the Mac OS is also available to use on. Uh, I have downloaded it, so I should be able to show it to you. Uh, this was designed by a few geeks. Okay, um, basically, it's handy we program to have on your computer if you want music or if you're into technical podcasts or whatever. It's free to use, it doesn't use a lot of resources. And it's a new version 2.79. It says it's a non dick application that lets you quickly and easily take any video from YouTube and download it. Okay. We all know that you can use video downloader, but this is just a wee program I wanted to share with you. Uh, that's some screen that you see in the background. It's, uh, one of them Google Images as a background for the gimmick I've seen there. Tubo. Now you might have a few problems with it when it's seven sometimes. Uh, let's see now. Tubo. Okay, let's wait till it loads up and it's loading. Please wait. Let's go over this. Okay, and this is basically up here. Now, 
YouTube categories, basically, and you have a list of different categories, movies, calories, whatever. Uh, let's go to, we'll see now. I'm basically in the computer track podcast, but I'll have a look at this. Uh, entertainment. Uh, here you have, it's loading up a list of different entertainment videos. Okay. Let's type in the search box for music. And here you have the music. That's, that's basically how quick it is. Okay, so it's called T-O-O-B-L-E for free for Windows or Mac computers. If I wanted to uh, download the check video, I basically would highlight the video itself. Let's see, I want something half decent. I'm going to type in uh, country to see what happens. Well, these are country videos, okay. Alan Jackson is one of my favorites, okay. I click the box and I click, you we'll see, download the check video. And the box will open up download and it'll start to download. Okay, so it's just a small program, the like war, but it's only good day to use when you're broadcasting. It's different. It uh, gives you a bit of music and stuff like that. Now, it will come down depending on the speed of your internet connection. Okay. And it does come down as an MP4, which you can put it on your MP3 player or etc. Alan Jackson, on the size, that's the size of the file. Uh, complete percentage and the speed that I'm getting at the moment. So well, let's load it down and see how it plays. Now you can go to YouTube directly, or you can use a program called MiniTube. There's quite a number of them out there. But I like this one here, Tubo. So now I've got what one, two, three, four computers running at the minute. So I think the wife she's in her name stairs. So let's see what happens. I know that's one take. Fourteen seconds. One minute. Fifteen seconds. Now next Sunday I won't be broadcasting friends, I'm taking uh, a small vacation, so I'll not be broadcasting next Sunday, but we will be back the week after, which would be, let's see, uh, 26, 17th of July we'll be back broadcasting again. Okay, 17th of July. If there's any particular thing that you would like, help us on your computer or a program or something that's helping your computer and you're not too sure send me a wee email message to blog tv pc caramel and i'll look at it and we'll talk about it on the next show so if there's anything that you have skills of if you're a web designer if there's something that you're into cooking or something and you want to share it on channel bring them that's what it's all about So I'm hoping not boring you today. It takes a while for it to build up a room. Uh, it's just that we haven't been broadcasting for a while, and that's why. Okay, 96%. 99, okay. Let me double click now and see what happens. I don't want it to come down. All right. It's converting the file now. It'll convert the file and all for you. Okay. So it's actually converting the file. Thanks, me up. We'll try. We'll try. Uh, or sometimes it's, you know, you're sort of looking through your notes and you're sort of trying to pick things. It's not too complicated, you know. But believe you me, there's a lot of stuff in my books will put your head over. But what I usually do during the week is prepare 
don't know exactly what I'm trying to talk about, you know. So it's actually converting the file and all for you, this wee program. So it's 